Hello, fellow hunters. Thank you so much for tuning in. Welcome, friends. This video, I'm going to be talking about the history of Monster Hunter and how exactly it changed throughout the generations. So let's get into it. The first game, obviously, we're going to be talking about is the start of it all. The Monster Hunter game that was the origin, the PlayStation 2 game, self-titled Monster Hunter. Now, why was this game so successful, such a big deal, when honestly nowadays you'd go back and you wouldn't really even play it as a Monster Hunter fan because it's so, I'm going to use the word, clunky. It's definitely not as streamlined and as accessible as Monster Hunter is nowadays, especially according to World, but even if you compare it to the older Monster Hunter games like Monster Hunter Generations, it's it's vastly different, even if it doesn't look it. <laughs> Visually, the series hasn't changed that much, and mechanically, it hasn't changed as much either, because a lot of the game's gameplay is very much the same as how it started. Monster Hunter on the PlayStation 2, originally released in September of 2004. Now, what was so special about this game? Why did this game start it all? What was it about this game that actually made the franchise blow up and was so successful? Well, at the time, Capcom was really trying to make a game series that utilized the PlayStation 2's online capability. So they came up with about three games at the time that they really wanted to showcase the online features. One of those games was Monster Hunter. And Monster Hunter was a very different game compared to a lot of the games that were out at that time. Monster Hunter is an action RPG, meaning that any attacks that you do or that the monster does all happen in real time. Many people try and compare this game to Dark Souls, but really, this game is very, very different from Dark Souls. The only thing that they have in common is that they are both skill-based games. Monster Hunter created its own genre of video games. It created a hunting genre, and it was really doing the hub quest-based systems before anything else, before Destiny, and before a lot of looter shooters. This is very much the origins of a looter game. So that's pretty cool. Capcom really utilized this game to show off what type of online capabilities they had. Now, it wasn't the most insane online game, but it, it was good enough to the point where it actually developed its own community in Japan. And because of the mass amount of players that were uh, engaged in it in Japan, it actually developed into a very big series. So we have a lot of the original Japanese players to thank for that. Let's just highlight some of the things that separate this game to uh, a lot of the more modern Monster Hunter games. First and foremost, the gathering hub, or hall, was actually not accessible unless you were online. So it wasn't accessible in single player. So if you go back now and play Monster Hunter for PS2, you are going to be severely disappointed if you're looking for online play. It has been discontinued and you won't even have access to the gathering hall, which is a little disappointing because that's the only way that you can play quests such as Fatalis and Kirin and, uh, and the other one was Leo Shenlong. If you bought Monster Hunter for PlayStation 2 today, you'd only really be able to play the single player games. There isn't really a uh, ad hoc or a local play for PlayStation 2, or it's not multiplayer either. So it's only online play, and the online is discontinued. So it's a little disappointing, but at the same time, if you really wanted to play Monster Hunter, the first game in its entirety, I would recommend just picking it up on the PSP, Monster Hunter Freedom. And we'll get into why in the next video. There are many things that weren't entirely fleshed out yet, but a lot of things that really worked for the series that they've kept and have continued even into world today. So combining items was really a big deal back then. And you didn't even have a combined list. You would just have to guess, or you would just have to know what you were combining. And it was a really big deal because Monster Hunter is the type of game where it encourages you to bring the right items for each quest. But in case you didn't bring the right items, they pretty much have every item accessible in the overworld, in the map that you're going to be exploring and questing in. So 
theoretically, you could actually forget all your items and just gather enough herbs and blue mushrooms and combine them and, ha and honey, and then you can make your own mega potions for the quest that you're on. Or, let's say you run out of items, then you can go and gather some and continue the, hu the hunt. So, in that aspect, it's a very unique game, and I don't think any other game has that sort of gameplay where you're stuck with the items that you bring out on the quest, and that's that. It's very different in, ter in terms of world because nowadays you can just go back to the camp, restock your items, easy peasy. Back in the first Monster Hunter, honestly, back in all the other Monster Hunters, the items that you bring, that's all you get. And that's pretty scary because that means you have to use your potions really wisely. But again, if you're a smart hunter, you can go out and gather those things in the wild. You don't always have to bring them with you, though it's much easier that way. Another difference, very slight difference, is when your weapon is at the highest sharpness possible, which was green at the time, it will actually glow yellow. So kind of like a gold glow on the weapon. That means that your sharpness is as high as possible, and they changed it later after they implemented higher levels of sharpness. The weapons also didn't tell you the amount of elemental or status damage that you'd be doing. It shows you the inflated raw damage of each weapon. However, it never really showed you the numbers as far as paralysis, as far as poison, any other statuses or elemental things, you know. They don't really show you a number or how much elemental damage you're doing. Also, in the very first game, you can't even upgrade your armor. So we all know the grind to get armor is just insane, uh, especially if you're trying to get one full set, which honestly in the base game is much more advised to get a whole set because then you don't really have to try and mix and match pieces and trying to make a custom armor or a mix set. It's, uh, it, you automatically just get the skills that it comes with, and that's that. You had a limited inventory space in the first game. You only had one page of equipment and about two pages of items. So, very limited as far as what you can build, or what you can, what you can um, have on hand. The HR cap was 20, so the original game did not have G rank missions. It was only up to high rank, and the high rank cap was level 20. Also a very strange aspect in the original PlayStation 2 game is that you would use the right stick, the right analog stick, to attack. So you'd press up on the right analog stick for a triangle essentially, and you could press sideways for a circle essentially. Very odd way of playing the game because you'd still have to use a claw grip if you'd like to control the camera at the same time as playing. So it's a very strange sort of controls, but the people in Japan seem to enjoy it. Circle is the dodge button instead of X. R2 is actually the run button. L1 is the camera snap still, and L2 is to cycle items. So they definitely had a few different changes as far as button mapping. There were really no weapon previews when you would go to a blacksmith and try and create a new weapon. You couldn't really see how the weapon looked until after you had already made it. Also, there were some weapon features that were not really fleshed out yet to this point. So if you took a greatsword in the very first Monster Hunter nowadays, you wouldn't actually be able to do a charged attack. The charge up attacks didn't come till later in the series, and actually with the hammer, the hammer did not KO monsters until later in the series as well, which is very strange. So you could pick up the hammer in the first game and try and get a stun, and you just wouldn't get it the whole battle. That's just because stuns weren't around yet. It's funny because in the original game you still had to you had to bring your own pickaxes and they actually didn't get get rid of that until Monster Hunter World. Be mindful that if you were to go back and play this game, you will need to bring your own pickaxes and that does take inventory space. And you are limited to I think two pages of inventory when you're two or three maybe when you're out on the quest and there is no like extra page just for items on a quest or anything like that. No, it's just what you take is what you get, what you gather, and as soon as you hit max, that's that. Also, you had to paintball monsters. You weren't able to just track them instantly. You had to paintball a monster, and if you didn't have a paintball, you'd literally have no idea where it was, unless you waved at the blimp, which would just give you a temporary psycho serum, which is not an item anymore. But, let's say a monster ran away from you and your paintball wore off. The way that I used to track a monster is I would actually angle the camera to the ground and I would look at its shadow, I would pay attention to the direction that the shadow went, and then I would run in that direction. 
which is hilarious because you don't even know if you're going the right way I'm literally just following a shadow sometimes it would not even take me to the right area sometimes these monsters like do a half circle into a different area so you think they're going into one area and they actually end up in another and then the fight just goes way too long because you cannot find them again and then you fail and it sucks insects are so much better it's so it's so nice that we actually have footprints and that you don't have to paint a monster it's just like it's wow it's quality of life has changed and improved so much there were no shock traps in the original monster hunter there were only pitfalls if you catch a monster in a kill quest and you trank it you will fail a quest oddly enough so you weren't actually allowed to capture a monster if it's not a capture quest you could still use the pitfall for damage but if you capture it with tranks in a kill quest you will fail there are no gestures in the first game they added gestures later on there was also no feline companion in the first game so they added that one later on to enhance the single player aspect armor skills are still in the first game however they were hidden and making mix sets is much harder because they're hidden skills so you could make mix sets however making them you'd have to either have a strategy guide or look online to see how many points are uh, accumulated from what piece because it doesn't tell you in the actual ui of the game the original monster hunter came with these weapons the great sword the hammer the sword and shield, the lance, the light bow gun, and the heavy bow gun. When it was released in the West, they did add in the dual blades, which they only put in the G rank version of the Japanese game. So after the after Monster Hunter came out in Japan, it did so well that they made a sequel game. It was still pretty much the base game, but it was just an addition of variants and G rank missions, which just expanded upon the game and they made small tweaks. And they also added the dual blades. When it came to the West, they just gave us the dual blades because we weren't really going to get the G-rank version of the game. So that was nice of them. And this is a list of all of the large monsters in the game. Biserios, Cephadrome, Diablos, Fatalis, Gendrome, Gravios, Gypsiros, Iodrome, Kezu, Kirin, Laotian Long, Monoblos, Plesioth, Rothalos, Rothian, Velocidrone, who you start with, and Yin Kutku. Great lineup. And I think that's that. That's all the real changes as far as the things that are very unique to the original Monster Hunter game. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed the comparison from classic Monster Hunter to a little bit of a more streamlined Monster Hunter to what we have nowadays. The next video in this Monster Hunter history of Monster Hunter series will be comparing the first Monster Hunter to the next Monster Hunter which released on the PSP and was almost a rehash of the first Monster Hunter. All right, friends, thank you very much for watching the video, for tuning in. The next video will be posted shortly in Monster Hunter History Part 2. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe because more is on the way. Thanks, friends. Have a great day.